and believe me, the prices are going to go up too because they have yeah. to cover. You know, that you're going to pay for that. This compliance cost. Somebody's going to have to fill that stuff out. And especially if it's complicated. If it's simple, like I said, it took me like ten or fifteen minutes to get mine done. It was a really simple one. Mm-hmm. But others can take like an hour or something. So these firms are going to be charging you. You know, if, if your LLC cost five hundred bucks to set up, now it's going to cost you seven hundred bucks. So it's, 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 there's a hidden cost there somewhere. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Report, Saturday edition. And I got my co-host today, Mauricio Raul. Mauricio, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, my friend. Yeah, man. Um, So today I want to jump in. Uh, We got two major changes in 2024, Um, two big ones. Uh, One is the Corporate Transparency Act. What does it mean to the listeners uh, and what exactly is it and what action is required? And the second one, big change this year, is uh, now we got a fourth state uh, that is basically going to be a charging order state along with Nevada, Delaware, and uh, Wyoming, and that's the state of Texas. So uh, first things first, what is the Corporate Transparency Act? So the Corporate Transparency Act basically affects anybody who's ever filed some kind of an LLC or corporation or S Corp or LP, like any entities, if you've ever filed in your life. So a lot of our real estate investor friends have LLCs, right? So if you have an LLC starting January 1st of this year, 2024, you are required to report to the government certain personal information, right? Uh, information about your company, of course, and also information about the, the owners of the company. Because the government, what they're really worried about is this money laundering and you know tax evasion and all this you know uh, terrorism and all that stuff. And so they've, they've just had enough of it and they just want to make sure that you're disclosing to them. So there's no more hiding who you are or who the ultimate owner is. And so they're really cracking down on that. And that started uh, literally, you know, a week ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so for the listeners out there that have LLCs, what exactly does this mean for them? So there's three types of things that need to be reported. Number one is the LLC itself. So you've got to report to the government, you know, the name of the LLC, where the jurisdiction is, some kind of ID number. So usually that's the EIN. uh, And that that gets reported to the and the address, obviously. That's that's pretty straightforward. That's not a big deal. That's not really very controversial. Where it gets controversial is that they want to know who the beneficial owners of those companies are. And for that, I'll tell you what those are in a second. But for those people, if you're a beneficial owner, then what your name they want your home address, not a, not a business address, not a PO box. They want your home address. They want your date of birth. They want your driver's license number or your passport number. And they want a copy of your passport or your driver's license. So that's information that you're required to provide the government agency called FinCEN, which is a financial networks crime enforcement division. And that has to be done depending on when you follow the LLC. Has to, there's some time restrictions. But that's a lot of personal information. There's a lot of folks, including myself, that are pretty private. We don't want to necessarily yeah. be, you know, disclosing all this stuff to. Now, supposedly it's private. Supposedly it's only for government purposes. It's only for law enforcement. But you know, there's not too many people that believe that. I mean, shoot! After all that information, <laughs> might as well might as, might as well ask for blood type. That's right. Spinal fluid. That's right. Um, that's a lot. Yeah. But, but here, um, here's who, who here's who's covered. So if you're a beneficial owner, that means you own 25 percent of the company or more. Okay. That makes you a beneficial owner. So obviously, if it's just you or you or your partner, you're probably you're there. And then anybody who has substantial control. So usually the manager, the GP. But you theoretically could have, you know, no ownership and no, you know, no official control. But if you're in the back and, you know, pulling the strings somewhere and you have some kind of substantial control of the company, you're going to be considered a beneficial owner and you've got that requirement. And then the third group of people that, that really sucks for me is anybody who actually files the LLC. So all these companies that do mm. the filings for you, they also have to comply. So when I file an LLC on behalf of my clients, I would have to give my name, my information, my date of birth, my stuff. So it's, it's, it's really an onerous thing and it's really causing a lot of havoc because you know, people just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you got one LLC, two LLCs. It's not really that big of a deal, but for a lot of real estate investors, um, you got 20, 30, you know, you said one of your clients has 80 LLCs. I believe it. Um, I think we got about 27 or 28. And so, you know, obviously you can do it yourself or you can use some of these third parties. Um, we use a couple of them out there, prime corporate services, corporate direct. We use both of them. They, they will be able to do it on your behalf. Correct. Yeah. I think if you look, if it's a pretty simple thing, I yeah. think you can probably do it on your own. If it's just you, like I actually did it the other day from, from one of my companies where I'm literally the sole member and the sole manager. Okay. That's pretty easy. But when you have a situation where you have multiple owners, mm-hmm. right. And then the owners are actually holding companies and those holding companies are owned by other companies that are owned by trust. I mean, you get like those layers now it gets really complicated to figure yeah. out who exactly is the beneficial owner, who has a substantial control. Uh, somebody was asking me the day, it's like, you know, living trusts, for example, are exempt because you don't actually file it anywhere. But that doesn't mean that if your LLC is owned by a living trust, that somehow you're exempt. You've got to figure out, well, who's the, who's the beneficial owner? Well, mm-hmm. it's probably the trustee of the trust who has control over the LLC because they're the member, right? Yeah, so yeah. it can get pretty complicated. And for those, I would definitely reach out to Prime or Corporate Direct or any of those companies. They'll charge a nominal fee to get it done and you'll get it done right. But the penalties are pretty 
I think pretty egregious. I mean, mm. it's not it's it's not a slap on the wrist. What is the penalty again? So if it's just you just you just screwed up and it was non intentional, it's five hundred dollars per day per infraction. Mm. So that's that that can add up pretty quick, especially if you don't know yeah. about it. Like I, I'm I'm seeing a situation where you didn't even realize you weren't doing it, and you, and suddenly it's like three months later, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, that's a hundred days times five hundred bucks a day. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it, if you let it go for a year, that's one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. And what if you have twenty five LLCs? A hundred percent. What are you going to do at that point? And if you willfully do something like, hey, I don't want to give you my home address, and so I'm going to mm -hmm. give you a business address and pretend it's my home address or or whatever, then you get into the criminal side, and that's ten thousand dollars a day, two years of jail time. Wow. Two years imprisonment. So they're they're taking. Why, why are they doing this in your estimation? Well, I don't know about my estimation, but the the, the stated claim is is just a, all this you know international terrorism and and, and overseas people that are, are coming in and, and setting up LLCs and not disclosing their taxes, not disclosing that they're you know affiliated with terrorist organization and all those quote unquote nefarious people. That's the stated. Uh, that's the state thing. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories as well as to what the, what this it, is really for. And it seems to me like the the workload and the personnel they're going to have to hire just to. Uh, monitor and regulate all this is going to be completely extensive. Yeah, what's interesting is that and the, who's covering this? Taxpayers, <laughs> of course. So the, the so the government agency set up a, a website, which is always concerning, right? When the government sets yeah. up a website, like a how much did it cost? And b I don't know what the number is. I I, I probably should. Know. I know it's about fifty or six. There's like sixty thousand, you know, or is it sixty million? There's a lot of entities out there. Now I actually forgot the number. Like, is that website going to survive? I mean, is it just going to crash? That's one of my concerns. Like, you're coming. I wouldn't wait till the last minute because you're up against your deadline, right? You, 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 you've got to get this thing done by tomorrow and you're filling it out today. What if the thing crashes or it just doesn't work or it doesn't accept and now you're late? It just becomes a pain. It's, 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 we've actually, uh, yeah, Premier Law, we've actually decided not to, we've gotten out of the business altogether. Like, we're no longer setting up LLCs or entities for our clients. We've got a, a sister yeah. company now that just handles all of those, the, all that stuff because- the liability is just too high. Yeah. I mean, what it's ultimately doing is it's creating another barrier to entry for people that want to do business. Um, it's creating more red tape, more bureaucracy, yep. which you you are seeing in a lot of liberal markets around the country. Yep. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just another layer of uh, of basically a barrier to entry for a lot of business owners. And, and, and believe me, the prices are going to go up too because they have yeah. to cover, you know, that you're going to pay for that, this compliance cost. Somebody's going to have to fill that stuff out. And especially if it's complicated, if it's simple, like I said, it took me like 10 or 15 minutes to get mine done. It was a really simple one. Mm -hmm. But others can take like an hour or something. So these firms are going to be charging you, you know, if, if your LLC cost 500 bucks to set up, now it's gonna cost you 700 bucks. So it's, 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 there's a hidden cost there somewhere. When's the last day to do this? So if you file an entity this year in 2024, you have 90 days from the date of filing to get that in. If you have a prior entity from prior, obviously from prior years, you have till the end of the year to get it done. Got it. So that's the Corporate Transparency Act. And then the second big change of 2024 is you got Texas joining Nevada, Delaware, and Wyoming as a fourth charging order state. What the heck is a charging order state and what does it mean? Yeah, so so a charging order is really what you want. If you get sued, you want to make sure that your creditor, whoever has a judgment against you, is limited to a charging order. Because what that what that means is that they cannot take over your company. They don't get shares in your company and they don't take over control of your company. They just get the distributions that you would have received. So that's what you want, because then you can play around. You can turn off your distribution. You, you can mess around, right? You don't want the you don't want your creditor to come in and take over your company and then sell it, right? So charging order is what you want. Um, about half the states in the country have a charging order as the exclusive remedy. So that's that's good. But that exclusive remedy doesn't always extend to single member owners. Right. So if you're a real estate investor and it's just you or it's you and your spouse, that's considered single. Then none of these states really give you that charging order protection because you're a single member. The reason for charging order just doesn't make sense. We don't need to get into the details, but it just doesn't make sense for a single member. But there are it used to be three states, Nevada, Delaware and Wyoming that specifically amended their statutes to extend that protection to single members. So that was amazing because now as a single member LLC, you want to set up your, your companies in those states. Well, as of September 1st, Texas now joined that, that, that elite group and they rushed and amended their statutes. And now they also extend charging order protection to single member LLCs, even though quite honestly, that makes no sense whatsoever because the, the, the whole reason to have ch charging order protection is to protect the partners. Mm -hmm. And since there are no partners, it makes no sense, but who cares? They went out, they amended their statute and say, you get the same charging order protection for single members as you do multi-members. So now what's happening is that all of my clients, and we have a lot of clients in Texas, uh, when they're setting up their entity structuring, I'm saying, well, there's no point, there's no reason for you to go set something up in Nevada or Delaware or Wyoming, just set it up in Texas now because you get that same asset protection that you did if you went to one of those other great states. Yeah, that's interesting because everyone always talks about 
Wyoming, Delaware, Nevada, yeah. as you know, being states that are quote unquote non-piercing prevents you from the inside attack, which would be like a tenant slipping and falling, but also prevents you from an outside attack, which, which would be like, you know, me getting in a car accident here in California with a motorcyclist and that motorcyclist yeah. suing to get into properties out of state. Uh, but now you're saying Texas provides that uh, same quality of service and asset protection just as Delaware, Wyoming, and Nevada. One hundred percent. I love that. Yeah. So it's, that's that's a big one. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, Texas has always been for me right below. It was always like second tier, just below, because it did have a charging order as an exclusive remedy for for multis, but they mm -hmm. weren't clear on the single. And there was actually a, there was actually a case that came out like three or four years ago that kind of put the, into doubt the single. And I think that's what prompted the legislator to go amend it to make it crystal clear. No, no, you guys get the same extension uh, protection as well. Love it. Well, that concludes this edition of the Saturday edition episode. He is Mauricio Raul. I'm Rich Summers. Listeners, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.